but this is what I call my spiral texture box. And it's just made out of it, like in between the three, you know, two and a half, three inches depth. And I start with a three inch block this way. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is round it over. So I'm gonna grab me my roughing gouge. And this is really pretty wood. And it takes the texturing and things well, too. It's got a lot of tight grain in it. Okay. My tool rests a little too high for that roughing gouge. I had it set for my smaller one here. Let's turn that up a little bit. I'm going to crank on my tail center just a little bit more just to make sure it's in there good and tight. Don't need this little puppy flying out. Lock it down. Everything's locked. Everything's good to go. Here we go. So we're just rounding this down just like any other block of wood, just like I showed earlier. This is just a smaller piece. That beehive box that we, or jar thing we did earlier, it was a, that was a four, four inches thick by, I can't remember the, it's, it was four inches this way and eight inches long just so you guys get an idea of how big that piece was this is a it's got tight grain it takes texture well but it cuts like it's butter You can see how black the chips are coming off for rainbow poplar. That's crazy, isn't it? Okay, so we got, see how pretty that is in there. So I got just a little bit there. So I must have been off square just a little bit, this spindle blank or piece I got. So I need to take that down a little bit more. Don't want to take too much you just want to get it down to where it's round there we go you don't want to take a whole bunch off there keep as much as you can man so next thing we want to do is the same thing i want to make a tenon on this side and i'm going to flip it over and put it in a chuck put a recess on the bottom of it just like we did the beehive box First thing I want to do is just true this up. Okay, so I need to bring that tool rest in. So I can feel it bite, bite me a little bit. So I need to get my calipers. I measured them for the tenon already during the break. It's not going to take too much. Get an idea right there. Just a half a cut, half of the width of the parting tool. So I don't want to waste any wood in case I go too small. I just have to start over again. It's best to just sneak up on these things. I'm also going to break out my, for this box, I'm also going to break out my, uh, a buffing wheel to buff it up. Okay, so that's that's okay. I need to make it just a little bit bigger. So this next cut, I'm just going to enlarge it a little bit. Take one more cut down to that one. And just cut it down just a little bit there. All right, it's just barely going on, so that's good. So this isn't a really big box, so I don't really need a really big deep tenon on it, so I just wanna take one little smaller bite here just to chew the bottom up, make sure it's flat. 
and the corner's sharp where the tenon meets. Measure that one more time against the box there. That's good. So now we can take it out from between centers, put my chuck on. Here we go, Chucky. I'm going to close these jaws down all the way and measure that for the recess. And because this has a lip on it, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than that. Bigger. All right. Grab these calipers so you guys can see what I'm doing here. That should be about right. It's a little, a little too big, maybe. Well, we need a little playroom, I guess. Get down just a little bit. So I don't want to waste any wood, really. There we go. Because when the jaws are closed down like this, it's not a complete circle. So you want to make it a little bit bigger when you're measuring. Because there's a saw kerf in there when they cut these apart. So right there, when there's a little bit of a gap, that's when you got the perfect circle. And that's what these are set at right there. So we need to put this in the jaws. Maybe that tenon a little bigger than I wanted, but that's all right, it'll still work. I try to get it as close as I can to the size of the tenon or the size of the jaws when they're shut down a little bit more than that. One thing about one ways, they don't have, they're not, they don't have sharp points like, let's see, the jaws are different. If I was to open it up that far on, on this chug, it'd only be grabbing here and here and, you know, the four points, the two points on each jaw. These kind of jaws, they're flat and they have serrations right here. So there's a nice flat area with serrations here and here so it gives it a much more better grip than say the dovetail jaws when you enlarge the jaws a little bit like this so what i want to do is make a recess so i need to make a make a, a mark here i need to lower the tool rest to do that it's like we did before Like this. Right, so I'm just going to start towards the middle there and work my way out until I get the mark I need, which is right there. I'll, I don't know if a pencil is going to make it show up anymore, but on camera, but I'll make sure I mark the right one. Yep. So you can see where I marked the, with the calipers there, it's the outer ring right there. Showing up pretty good in the camera. So. You grab my parting tool and you just start, I need to back that out, tell stock. Now this wood kind of smells a little funky. <laughs> it's not a bad funky, but nevertheless, it's kind of funky. So I'm going to stop and one more cut there.
Let me make sure that wall is straight. I'm going to leave a little crown in the middle like I did before for some texturing. Clean that up. Make sure that crown doesn't stick past what, where the foot would be. So I need to take it down just a little bit. You guys can see that pretty well. Let me try another camera. Uh, let's see here. Let's try this one. There we go. There we go. That's a good view. So I'm just cleaning up this little button down there. For me, it's showing up kind of actually lighter than it is on my in person because this wood is so dark. I don't have a I'm creating a shadow, so I'm, oh, I think I can adjust my light there. Ah, there we go. That's better. You guys can see that better too. So I'm just making that, make sure, sure that wall is straight. And I'm just gonna take a look and see how the cuts are coming. So this is coming out really smooth for a party tool no tear out at all i need to go a little bit deeper though but the first thing i want to do is i want to create just a small bring that in just a little bit first as a part with a spindle gouge i'm just going to do a sheer cut across here just to concave this just a little bit so when it's sitting on a table it's not going to it's not sitting on a flat it's going to be sitting right on the outside ring there. There we go. So now I need to go deeper. Oh, looks like somebody came in, in the waiting room. Let me let, let them in real quick. There's my thing here, admit. Looks like we had somebody come in a little late. There we go. So I'm gonna go a bit deeper with this. That little button is still short enough so I don't need to worry about that but I'm gonna just kind of give it a chamfer there a little shape so that's just straight up and down off the parting tool and see how fine these shavings coming off my just my parting tool are with this kind of wood I just want to make sure I'm deep enough so we don't run into problems as far as having this come off the lathe at us. I want to go at least a quarter inch. So I'm just going to check it. Grab me a ruler here. Where's my quarter inch? Go just a little bit deeper. I'm not very deep at all. All right. It looks deeper than it actually is. So 
just want to create a flat bottom on here as much as possible. I'm just using this parting tool as sort of like a skew to go back and forth. Make sure it's nice and flat. And again, another, just going to create a taper, a little button there all the way to the bottom. There we go. That should work. Clean up that little sidewall there. It's a little bit of a gouge. Or a little line there still. Let's see if I got rid of it. I don't want to go too thin because we got to grip that this piece in the recess when we're hollowing it out. So, so let's do a some text drain on there. Pull out that knurling tool again, and it should fit. Uh, I'm gonna grab me my smaller one. It's a little too wide. Let's see if this one will work. It's gonna be barely. Um, I'm gonna try my big one. So they're just the width is the same, so you turn the lathe down, bring this up a little bit, tool rest. Still a little too high. I'm just gonna stick that in there and get it rolling. So a little too fast. Remember, this is an impression tool, so we gotta make sure it is. So that's just catching the corner, I think. Yeah, put a nice little. See, where does that knurling tool come, come from? from? You can buy it from craft supplies or. Um, I got these from Ron Brown's Best because they're cheaper than craft supplies. And it's just a, it's just called a, a texturing tool or knurling tool for wood, wood turning. If you go to one of those sites, Ron, Brown, Ron Brown's Best dot com, I believe it is, or craft supplies. Craft supplies sell a, they, they call them Wagner tools. They're the, they have a brand name, you know, it's associated with a unknown wood turner. So the, the price is like $15 more each, something like that. So I bought them through Ron, Ron Brown's. And it's a metal working tool, really, is what it is. So I'm going to grab me my elf tool. And I'm going to change the that bit. I've got a different bit here. A little different. See, this is a straight round bit. I'm going to put the more long, elongated bit in there. Now, this is a carbide cutter, and it just there's a rare earth magnet in here that in the bottom of this bearing and allows it to just sit, stay inside, and spin at the same time with that bearing. You need to turn it down a little bit. This instead of impressing the the wood, this actually cuts the wood. So we're just gonna use this in the middle here, get it spinning and and we just slowly draw it back. This box is all about texturing. So we wanna put texture all over. Whether you can see it sitting on a shelf or not, you'll know it's there. Yes. Barely can see it. So the wood is so dense. I'm gonna try that again. It'll just start in the same grooves once it starts spinning. Just take my time and go a little slower. Maybe bring the tool over a little bit. And it's, the reason why it's speeding up is because I'm getting closer to the outside and not in the middle. If I was to put it out here, it would really be going crazy. 
So it's just got a really slight, nice little detail in there. The light just hits it just right where I'm at, and it's got like a little bit of a flower pattern there. So I'm going to grab me a different tool for that one here. See if I can get something else going in there. I'm going to grab me my chatter tool. See, a box like this is your chance just to play around with all kinds of different things. So for a chatter tool, you want to raise your tool rest up so you can get that chatter going. You don't want it like, you can do it like this, but you're better off at having the tool rest to where your chatter tool has a downward angle to it. It'll create a better chatter. So I'm just going to bring it across just right in this area right here, right beyond what we just did a minute ago with the impression tool. And I see it made something. Just a barely a mark in it though. But it's a bunch of little lines. So I did leave a little bit of a texture there. I can get another tip here. It's a little more pointed. There it is. We'll give the pointed one a little shot here. It'll probably fit down in there a little bit better. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack it from this side. I'm going to reverse the delays. So I'll be able to get it a little bit better of an angle here. That definitely left a mark. Oh, yeah. The louder it screams, the bigger mark it's leaving. <laughs> so I'm not sure how much that's showing up for you guys. Let me switch cameras and see if it'll... There we go. You guys can see all that now. You see it right in here. And this is from the impression, and you can barely see where that elf tool left the mark there, but it's still pretty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just I'm just gonna make a little parting tool right mark right here with a thin parting tool so I know where the lid is gonna go. So we're at two and a half. So one and a, and a quarter, let's say. About a third is like one and three quarters. Let's just call it at that. That looks like a good place to start. So I'm going to take a lot of the stuff off the top, so I want to bring it down just a little bit. This is just so I know where the, the lid's going to separate. So I'm going to grab me a spindle gouge here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating a cove right in here. These two parts. So you can see I'm just starting this, the tools at about 10 o'clock angle here when I start to cut. I start before I put the bevel against it and then raise the handles to begin the cut. And I'm going to come back and do the same thing on this side here. Come back here and do the same thing here. I want it to go a little bit deeper than the what I got here. Okay, so that's not looking very good here. So I need to clean that up. It's not really a, a curve going in there. It's more of a straight line.
There we go, that's a little bit better. I need to take a little bit more off of this side because it is a little larger than the other side. So on the match across that little gap we've got going. I should go a lot deeper than that, so I'm just thinking. That's what I do when I'm working. I, I talk out loud while I think while doing demos. That's something a Richard Raffin actually taught me. <laughs> he said the best way to give a demo is whatever you're thinking, say it out loud as you go. I've been doing that ever since. I've been fortunate enough to work with a lot of these known wood turners as a videographer for many years. So now I want to make another cove in here towards the bottom. Not too much because we don't want to take hit that bottom of that recess here. Make that recess too thin. So this won't be such a deep cove as that other one. And we're just going to do a couple of back and forths here, and we're going to put some texturing down inside these coves when we get to that point. That's what they're the elf tool. Elf tool excels at doing textures inside coves because of the shape of the bits. So let's try to match that roundness there so I can. Bring it up a little bit more. This is one of the kind of box where you can just play around with. There's no set rules. Okay, so what I want to do now, this will be a fun thing to do. I need to straighten these out though. Not quite curvy enough. See, it's not set in stone where that lid needs to come apart. So we can go past that and just. We mark that when we get to the bottom of the cove here. We get to as deep as we want to go. Just want to work from the end and We're going to take a bunch of this off at the top here. So. There we go. All right, so we got those codes done. Now what I'm going to introduce now is a miniature spiraling tool. This is made by Robert Sorby. Sells, it's sold by a lot of the wood turning craft supply houses, craft supplies, Packard, those type of places. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a spiral, spiral right across this top lip right here, or this top section here. You could, this platform is adjustable to the angle you want your spiral to be. There's a line here, but you don't actually have to follow that. It's got notches. If you set it for a certain amount, you can make uniform spirals and all, all kinds of things. But I've got it set a little bit of a 
more upward angle because I prefer that kind of spiral. And this flat rest sits right on the tool rest here. So we want to make sure it stays on there when we're making the spiral. You don't want it to drop off. So we want it to have a little bit back. You need to lower the, the tool rest a little bit so it's on center. And just bring that up and see if it's parallel where it's going to be cutting. It needs to come down a little bit more. Let's see here. Okay, that's good. So we are we are on center. So I'm gonna back this up just a little bit more. And we need to turn down the lathe a little bit. I don't need it, you don't want it going really fast here. So I'm at about 600, between 600 and 700 RPMs. So you just want to bring it in nice and easy. So it starts spinning. And we're just going to take it across, first pass. It'll take a few passes to get to the depth we want. And there's already spirals in there, and those those will catch where the points are. So it won't begin. You just take it in and gently grab it, and it's going to grab those same spirals again. Let's see where we're at here. So we're getting some nice spirals going. We can go quite a bit deeper, so I'm just going to keep on going. I'm going to turn down the weight just a little bit more. Seems a little fast. That's 400. Do one more pass and then we'll check our progress. It's kind of jumped out on me there, so I had to bring it back and start over again. Hopefully, that didn't mess up any of the spirals. I don't think so. So, as you can see, it's getting deeper and deeper as the more passes we make. And it's only going to go so deep before it hits the bottom. and. You can check how far you are just by putting the, the gear in there. So we got like three more passes to go. So we'll just gently put it in there until it grabs those grooves that are already there. I raised the hand, oh. That's not gonna affect it because it stayed in the grooves, but you wanna take your time. Hold on to it tight. You can raise the handle just a little bit more and it adds a little extra cutting to it, the action to it. It kind of skipped over, so I'm gonna go one more pass. Because it's riding in those grooves there, it should not skip over. There we go. You can see it's nice and spiral now. That's why it's called the spiral box. I can keep going and going a little bit more and more. We're about as deep as we're going to go, though, I think. And put that there. We do one or two more passes, and then we'll, we'll give it a stop there. As long as you still can see some sawdust coming off of there, a little shaving, that means it's still cutting. That's only going to cut so deep, only as deep, deep as the teeth. Now, Sorby makes a, a much larger version of this. But for a box this size, that would be a little overkill. And we're going to stop right there because we're getting a little bit of chip out right at the corners there. But I can cut those away. If you got any chip out on this end or on this side, you can just bring your gouge in and just 
kind of cut that off. So we're as deep as we want to go. So I'm going to bring my tool rest back up. I'm going to clean up those edges there. This is, this is normally how it's done. Usually you're going to get a little bit of tear out. Just a nice little slight cut there. Continue cutting that cove. Uh, even it out at the bottom. There we go. And right here, we're just going to take another cut. And we need to take a bunch of this off. It's a little high point right in here, so I'm going to clean that off. All right, so, so we got that. So now I'm just going to create a slight cove here just by going back and forth. Another place to put some texturing using the ELF tool. Go a little bit deeper, that's a little, a little too high there. So I can take some of that wood away. There we go. I'm just gonna grab me a good piece of sandpaper here just to cut those, uh, clean up those grooves a little bit. So you just roll your paper and just get it down inside there. This also helps round the round those coves. There's a little bit of a high point right there. So, and that can show up when you're doing the texturing with the elf tool. So we want to just make sure we get that nice and curved right through here. There we go. Have that polished up somewhat. Reverse it, we'll be cleaning up the bottom a little bit better. So we got that. So now what we need to do is grab that elf tool. It's in the drawer. I put that other Tossed it in here somewhere. There you are. Getting that round, the round tip again. So this will fit right down inside those little cove we, we created. So we need to turn the lathe down some. Go a little faster than that. A little too fast. One at about 400 RPMs is good for it. There we go. A 
Just go back and forth a few times. Make sure you get a good cut in there. And you can see those lines showing up right there. You do this on this side here too. Three hours in, I figured this was going to be a long one. Got some lines in there. And you can create some lines right in here. Start this direction going this way. Sort of in the middle there. We're going to go the opposite way here. Oop. Kind of jumped over that ridge there. Let's see what we got here. So those lines there. A little tear out there, but we're going to clean that up real quick. Let's get one of these nice little pads here. And this helps get rid of all the overhangs and little things that might be sticking up from all the texturing. This kind of wears down the texturing just enough. It cleans up the ridges and things. See, there's a lot of texture in this box. That thin parting tool again. We're just going to cut this right down the center here. I'm going to back out my full root, my tail stock right now. Just adding a little added pressure onto the parting tool here. We're almost through. Well, we'll just be able to just pop that off there. All right, so now we just need the hull of this. Not very deep at all. Just some, do some, using a spindle gouge, do some back cuts. Let's see if I find the right spindle gouge here. There we go. Switch cameras for you guys. Let's see here. If we gotta. There we go. Oh, get that tool out of the way. Need to back up my tool rest a little. Oh, my tail center a little bit more. So we're just gonna do some back cuts here real quick. You hold the tool at 45 degrees, and you're just cutting along this. Right along this area right here of the tool, around that sharp part, that sweat back part. And you can go forward to get rid of that little, I'm fighting end grain, so that's why it's jumping around. Well, that's time to get rid of that little nub in there.
Yeah, I just want to get rid of that thing out of there. I'm, ah. This wood is not liking these cuts, so I'm going to grab me a scraper here. That should probably do a better job. Where are you? There you are. Hopefully this one's not too big. If it is, I'm just going to have to get another. Nah, that'll work. Smooth out the bottom there. Uh oh. Ah, my recess broke. Well, there's not much I can do about that. Darn it. Yeah, I hate to toss it, so let's see if I can. Try to salvage this. So I'm going to grab me my chuck with my pin jaws on it. I'm just going to chuck it up this way. It just, just the wood just gave way a little bit. Got a little bit too thinner than I thought right there, I guess. I need to. Kind of cut all that off and make this a tenon right here. Or another recess, but I don't think I'm, I can do another recess. All right, let me get my spindle gouge here and take all that off. So all that pretty stuff is going away. But I showed you guys how to do that, so. I did want to show you guys the plug, how I make a plug that goes inside. That's why I want to keep going. So I'm just gonna bit deeper. Oop. Escape back right there. I dress that up a little bit. We'll put the tenon on here, hollow it out, then we can reverse turn it and then clean up the bottom again. That should do it. Make sure that's nice and straight. There we go. We're gonna reverse turn this man. Days wearing out. So I'm gonna finish cutting this out. My mistake was I think I made that recessed wall when I was doing this outside cove. I made it too thin and it broke out. Hey guys, got a good look. I think. Okay, so it's just kind of biting there because I was digging into the corner too much. So I'm kind of, I'm cutting right in the center of this small little curve on the, it's going back and forth. This wood is not enjoying this kind of cut. You can tell it's a hard, it's a really dense wood. 
That's another reason why I don't think it's a rainbow poplar. <laughs> poplar isn't known to be a dense wood at all. all right, so I just want to make this wall a little bit thinner right here. We are deep enough. Well, not quite as deep as I want to go, but it'll work. You probably use that square carbide cutter and go a little bit deeper. So we'll see how this works. Well, it's grabbing. Okay, it's working. Okay, I'm able to go a little bit deeper with it. Just wanting to be a grabby gust here. I want to make sure these walls are straight because I need to put that plug in there. And there's no little nubbin thing sticking out. You don't need to worry about sanding this area here. So I'm going to get to making the plug real quick for you guys. Show you guys what I mean by a plug. So yeah, I'm using the, this really nice grained wood for the plug that's going to go inside of here. So I'm using a glue block because I didn't want to waste any of this nice wood going into the chuck, turn it into waste wood. And I don't use CA glue for my glue blocks. I use actual woodworking glue and I take rubber bands and I use those as clamps to hold it down until it dries overnight. So we need to cut that down. So I'm going to grab me my small roughing gouge. Turn up the speed a little bit here. I'll lay the tool rest a little too low. That's why it's choppy. Plus this wood is a little choppy too. It's kind of a weird... Get it turned around. Phew. <coughs> All right, so we still got a little ways to go. I have to grab me a drink real quick. I think I'd fall on a piece of wood. It's the problem with talking and turning at the same time. <laughs> Second here. All right, so we need to find that the diameter of the inside of the box here. So we want the plug to sit down inside of here. That should be a good fit. Need a little extra for glue. So I need to mark this one here. It's like we've marked the other ones all day here. Work your way out towards. I think I need to sharpen these things again. 
if you're going to use calipers like this, you want to you want to sharpen this one right here. Leave this one a little dull so that it doesn't catch in case it it does touch. All right, that's where I can work my way to. I'm going to mark that with a pencil so I can see it a little bit better. Where my pencil go? Where you are? There we go. Grab my roughing gouge again. Do some peeling cuts down here. Don't worry about it. if you hit the glue block, it's, it's glue all the way across the bottom there. So let's piece out isn't going to come off. Okay, so I'm just going to check to see if that fits in the in the bottom here. It's just barely there. I'll just take a little bit more off here and measure it. By doing a small peeling cut there, Let's see if it slides on. Okay, yep, that's a good fit. That's what we want. So that way we don't have any gaps showing it when you open the lid off the top here. Let's smooth all this out as best you can. Make it as straight as you can. It should slide right there. So this is going to be the tenon that the lid slip, slips onto. So we're just going to Take a couple more peeling cuts here and then part it off. And we're going to grab our pencil. Bring this up here. Decide how big of a lip you want, tenon you want. So we're just going to mark it right. There, that's a good size right there. So we know where to part this off at. And we're just gonna grab our parting tool, cut the, make the cut on the left side of the line. And you wanna concave the bottom just a little bit so it does sit nice and flat in the bottom of the, the box and plus it'll give some room for some glue preferably wood glue and over CA but I'll use CA today because it, it cures a lot faster this wood is kind of tough that's why it's giving me a little bit of a fit here Cut it all the way off. There we go. Hmm. Let's see how it fits in there. So we got a nice little whip going there just for the box lid to sit on. So I'll probably just sand that little nubbin off real quick. Go back and forth on my Decide which side would be best for the top and the bottom. This is going to have the prettier grain on the bottom of it. 
looks like this is going to have a prettier grain, so I do want to get this, this thing knocked off. Ah, this wood is just being tough. So I'm going to grab me a... Oh, where's the... It's got a little bit of a nub in there, so I'm just going to... There we go. Watch your fingers. All right, here we go. So we're finishing up this thing here. So we want it to sit flat in the bottom of that box. So this is what it's gonna look like, except we're gonna hollow this out. So I'm gonna get some CA glue, some quick spray stuff here. go so we just put some glue down there in the bottom you know not so much where it's going to squeeze all out you put that in there and you're going to want to get some this Just quick spray stuff in here. And we're just gonna set that right in there. Give it a little bit of a twist. And it'll cure really quick here. So we are done with this. Down in the tub you go. Let me chuck this back up. So now we're gonna smooth this part off because it is a little crooked, and then we'll hollow that part out. I might just start off. <laughs> I'm going to start off by using a Forstner bit. Make quick work of that. And the time gets, once that thing cures up, I'm just going to let it sit for a, a spell there. Looks like it's pretty well cured already. So I need to move some tools out of my way. Just a little bit of a... Just put a little bit of a notch in the middle there. The drill bit has something to find. And we don't need to go very deep. So that's the one we're going to use. Change out my tell centers here. All right, well, well, you might be able to get away with that. Just... Using a Forstner bit is going to make quick work of this. We don't need to go very deep. This is sort of like a, just a little tiny little box here that we're making today. Normally I go a little bit deeper, but we're short on time, so. We're just gonna go halfway down into the so you don't want a bottom 
out. Take take any of that nice grain out so we can go a little bit more. And that's about as far as I'm gonna trust it to go. So all we need to do now is just clean up the the inside with the box scraper. Uh, oh, this one's a little bit grabby. Ah, this one doesn't like that wood. So I'm gonna grab my round <coughs> carbide tool here to see how she does here. That's better. I'm just trying to get rid of that little little point hole that the Ooh, Forstner bit put in there. Now this wood has changed since I last used it. it. Used to not be so grabby. Wow. To get that little point out of there. It's an ugly sight. There we go. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a ridge in there that I want to get rid of. So I think that box scraper is going to be able to do a good job of that. Erase the tool rest up a little bit. There we go. Yep. So we got a nice little bottom in there. So I need to even up the the wall here. So I'm just gonna use my scraper again. It's kind of nice and easy. I'm going to take a whole bunch off because that is the lip for the lid. And that's running true. Ooh. That's how you put a plug in the box to change, change what a, the inside would look like. So this is going to be the inside. So I need to hollow that out. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put that Forstner bit back in my tail stock here. And grab my parting tool. I don't want to use parting tool. I just had you. There you are. I'm going to put a divot in there, Ugh, just like last time. So, just a lot of steps. Now, it's like the, it's like the bottom. We don't need to go really deep. Just want to make sure it's the right drill bit. That'll work. And then we've got to enlarge the hole a little bit to make it match the. The lip. Seems like my drill bit's a little loose. There we go. One thing I like to mention when you're drilling holes, hold on to your drill chuck. We're just going to go deep enough to where that lip's going to fit over, maybe a little further, not much. So you don't want, if you're not holding on to your drill chuck, you can, it can start spinning out of control and cause all kinds of problems. There we go. So 
Now we just, we just need to do is widen that hole up. So I need to get my calipers. Just need to measure oh, the outside diameters already set. That's good. How good is that, huh? So I'm gonna switch camera views here. All right. So I'm just gonna grab me my little scraper again, speed up the lathe. I need to raise the lathe up a little bit. So when I'm cutting this, I can raise the handle. It's like you should with a regular scraper. And the first thing I forgot to do, just I should have done. Ah, the reason why I did the caliper is just so I can measure the size of the hole I need. need to go up to there huh all right not much and I'll test it as I go Some people like those. From my years of experience, the selling boxes that it's the ladies that mostly buy them, and they don't like a pop lid unless they're carrying pills or something in the in the box. Thought I had it just right. Nope. Still got a little more to go. So if it comes out a little loose, that's fine. You just don't want it terribly loose. There we go. That's just a little wiggle the room there. That's all right. That's good. So I'm just gonna clean this inside up real quick. The scraper here. I'm going to grab a knurling tool, stick that down in there, and create a pattern. See what kind of patterns we got out of that. Well, it's got some, not the best, but some. It's right in there. And it's hard to see on the cameras, unfortunately. So. so the next thing we need to do is get my chuck with my pin jaws. Yeah, you guys can see if I can. Get the overhead to show that. Yeah, you can see the pattern in the bottom now. 
Now you could do like Cindy Drozas does, and she gets a those little sparkly diamond type earrings with the post, and she'll draw she'll drill a little hole right there and just glue it right there in the center. That's always pretty to do. There we go. So I'm gonna grab me my spindle gouge, one of them. Go ahead and clean up the top here. Should I'm cutting on center line, I'm not. There we go. So I'm cutting towards the headstock. So there's less chance of causing this to pop out of the the chuck. I just want to, I'm going to take off enough to get rid of that little hole that was in the center, which I just did. Kind of create a dome. Kind of overhanging the tool rest a little much. Oops. A little push cut, create like a dome on the top here. I did skip a little bit, so I need to check that. This did slide off and might have created a gouge in the wood somewhere. Yeah, right there. I'm just going to clean that off. Have a simple cut here. So I'm kind of creating an OG curve on the top. That's two curves that come together at a certain point, two opposite curves. polish that looks okay, so just a couple of draw pull cuts here shear scrapes get rid of tool marks any highs and lows kind of even out that curve a little bit there we go Normally I would sand it at this time, but let's get to the, let's just chatter tool it. All right. I use my chatter tool on the top. So I raise the, my tool rest up to where it's on a downward angle. I'm just gonna use that point. Turn it up a little bit. It's gonna make a loud screeching noise. Very loud in here. And it came out with a really pretty pattern right there. Let me take that scotch bright over that. So polish it up just a little bit. Get rid of any of the fuzzies that texturing creates. Should have showed you guys a side view of that. There's the pattern. That's on the chatter tool. Really pretty. Chattering works really well in in grain like this. Terrible in side grain. So I usually don't even try it in the side grain. So this is a, the lids all done. So we've got some texturing on the inside. And we got the texture on the outside. We got some in the coves. It'll fit over the lid just like that. 
a little more dressing up at the joint would be nice. Want it to run true. Okay, it's just a little out. I don't know why. Okay, twist it a little bit. Make sure it's good and snug on those jobs when you tighten them up. There we go. That's as true as it's going to get, which is fine. So we're just going to move a bunch of this and make a nice concave foot on there. I'm going to lower my pull rest a little bit. There we go. So I'm just going to peel away some of this extra wood. Best to cut towards the headstock whenever you can. Just a little push cut here, take that off. So now we're just gonna start doing some push cuts here to create a concave in the bottom. Just one more slight one. Have a look, see straight edge across there. Maybe we know when the box is sitting, it's just going to be sitting right on this little ring, ring right here. So I'm just going to take one more cut this way, a little further in, and I create a, a foot detail there. And just do some cleanup cuts. Get rid of any extra lines that might have shown up. So now we got a nice little foot forming there. So I'm just going to grab me my parting tool and just kind of make a straight line into that. Can we see another yeah. view? Oh, sorry. I don't know which one this does. There we go. So you can see I made a, a foot there using the parting tool, just like this. And this area right here is it slanted towards the center. That way the, the box will rest right on this ring here. And I bet you I can do, I'm just going to clean that little thing up there, and I'm going to do a matching chatter tool work on the bottom. Just want to get rid of that little high point there first. Chatter tool, what did I put you? There you are. So let's just do this again, sort of like a matching. Bottom and top. Here we go. Woo. Let's 
see how that came out. Okay, I can go a little more. Oh, that's, that came out really, really pretty. Let's see if I can get another two of that. Yeah, there you go. See that? So what I did with the point tool of this is I, I kind of dove in a little bit when I made that chatter, just so I can highlight the center there, and I brought it out, and then I came back with this and chattered some more right there in the center. That looks really pretty. I like chatter work. So right now, if I was to to finish this box off, I would take it to my, I would put a, my buffing wheel on here. Is it, it'll get all the wax since you put oil on it. If you use a buffing wheel and you want to use wax, it'll get the wax all down inside the, these deep grooves of the, Of the spiral we made earlier, so we got a very interesting box here. Spiraling, a lot of texturing. So this just this part here is just screws right onto my headstock there. I'm gonna slide my headstock back a little bit so you guys can have a better view when I'm buffing. There we go. And then the buffing will just there's three different kinds. This one's for the wax. And usually there's three steps and the buffing wheels are, are different plies. Some are thicker. And because this is the wax, it's a finer wheel. And just spins right on here. Just tighten it up by hand there. That's good. And then this is the this is the carnauba wax that you'll add after it starts spinning, and you want to run it about 1500 RPMs. You can see how it all evens out. It's a little too fast for that, so I need, and you just need to touch it with the with the stick. You, <clears throat> you don't need to uh, kind of I'm move my head stuck back a little bit more. Way so it's centered there. Adjust my camera. So you just want to take it and just basically kind of kiss it a little bit. That's all the wax you need to put on the buffing wheel. And you got to hold on to these pieces tight. Let's start with the bottom here. See how, it's, oh yeah, it's already getting a nice gloss on it. And you just want to turn it a little bit. Now the thing with the texture is you, you might get a, some of these little pieces of material stuck in there, but just a soft toothbrush or something would remove that really quick. So you just want to keep turning it. Hold on a good grip. Get right in the center there. And you can see it's already buffing up nice and shiny. Nice reflection there. So I'm gonna add just a little more wax. Just like this. And we'll start doing the outer edge here.
And the main thing is you gotta hold on tight. <laughs> Many times I've lost pieces taken off on me. Some broke, some didn't. I need to turn down the lathe just a little bit. It's a little too fast there. There we go. Now you want to turn it the other way. Get it right down in that area. Let's get a nice, you just can see that, that glossy shine to it. We want to get the inside done. Add a little more wax for the inside. Thankfully, that CA glue is holding up really well in there. So, <laughs> so that's nice and shiny in there. We'll go across this area one more time. It's a little dull. The nice thing about buffing is you can always bring your piece back and buff it again. It's just a hard carnauba wax is what this is. And it's totally food safe. That's what they coat M&Ms and things with is carnauba wax. So. All right, so now we need to do the top. This does get strings in your shop to a certain point and get in your nose. <laughs> We're just doing this the outside here. side done they have different size wheels like that would come in handy for this so you can tell it took off a lot of material off the wheel there they actually have round buffers too different sizes and we'll just finish the top here I'll grab me a toothbrush here in a second and get all those fuzzies out of the texture. All right, so got a nice shine on that. Grab me a, a toothbrush here. There it is. Uh, got to walk around something here to grab it. I really don't like using wire brushes. There's some people that that's what they do. They use wire brushes, but they do leave scratches. Minute scratches in, in the wood. 
even soft brass ones. Just pull a lot of that off of there. Once you get it to a point where you can yank it off, that's Draw it of it off, I think. This one right here in this side. Now loosen it up enough to where we can just grab it with our fingers and pull it out. So we got the top all polished up. That's a, just a really quick buff up. If I was to spend like an hour on it, it would just glow. You just want to get all the fuzzies out of the spiral here. The joints. There we go. Get this off of here. And there. All right, so we've got this box here. See a little bit of the shine from the, the wax, especially on the bottom there, certain areas on the top, all the different textures we added. So, so. all right. Thank you very much. We'll see you later. All right. Bye bye for now. want to do is you want to match the, the grind you already have on it which let me just see what grind I have on it let me check this for you guys so I'm gonna measure my grind for show you guys what I got here so just bring this up it's got a it's a 70 degree grind this is here, and you want to check the grind on this side too, which is easier said than done. So you got to turn the whole thing over. Remember right there. And the side grind is it's 80 degrees, so 10 degrees off of 90. So this part is. 80 degrees, this is the tip is 70. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find a diamond card and remove any burr that might old burr that might be there. You don't want to put a, a, a nice fresh burr and have an old burr on top of that. So you just scrape the top of the tool. And then you want to adjust your tool rest. It should be just about where I had it last time. So it's a little bit off, so I'm just gonna tap it until it there I don't see any more light. And okay, a little too much. Okay, when you're making a burr, you only want to go across it once, maybe twice, that's it. Otherwise, you're just going to put a big jagged edge on it as a burr, and it does not cut very well. So I'm going to raise the camera up so you guys can get a better view of this. So you just want to, oh, something fell. You just want to start on the, on the right corner here. 
Whoa. There we go. Right there. And just start right on the right corner. Just do a sweep. And you'll see it darken up. That's your burr. Now you're just going to need to adjust your... Pull out your platform and you're going to have to really adjust it way down. Until it matches that. And you can bring it. You can, it doesn't need to be exactly on there because you can manipulate the tool a little bit to match the grind. So if you're off just a little bit, like I am right there, you just twist the tool until it touches. And you just go back and forth a couple of swipes. And you should have a burr on there. And I don't, so I'm going to try it one more time. Seems like my platform does not want to lock down. There it goes. So I'm matching the, I'm matching the grind. And there we go. It's pretty easy.